Last week, we looked at one of the most incredible businesses in history, Texas Pacific Land Corporation. We saw that this business doesn't have much capital expenditures other than leasing land to all companies, and these all companies in return are going to pay them a royalty. There are other such businesses. I told you that I was going to look at all the oil royalty companies, especially those with operations in the permanent basin. There are four of them that I want to talk about in more details. Of course, TPL, we'll look at it in more details, Dorchester Minerals, Landbridge, and Viper Energy. Let's talk about Dorchester Minerals first, because if you can look at this chart, it's out there. And it's because of its structure as a limited partnership. The company doesn't really have shares, it has units. The way the company operates is to use its units to buy mineral rights and then lease it to the oil companies. Over the long term, you will see that the amount of money that they have been generating compared to the units increase is much bigger. So it is a good company to invest in. They are expanding their cash flows much faster than expanding the number of units. But the problem is that it is structured in such a way that it is not really so good for a non-American resident to buy shares of the company because of taxes. They pay a monthly dividend today the yield is 11%. So if you're interested and you're an American citizen, talk to your accountant, look at it. It is an interesting company, but you should be careful because the company doesn't pay taxes itself, but you have to pay taxes. And if you are not an American resident, it is much more difficult for you to do that. You don't want to invest in a company where 40% of the income is going away. So be careful with that. Another issue I had with Dorchester Minerals is that its operation goes beyond the Permian Basin. And I want to focus mostly on the Permian Basin. This is where most of the growth is happening right now in oil. The other parts of the United States where they own mineral rights, over the long term, is going to go down. It is already going down, but the Permian Basin, there is still growth there. Coming to TPL, there is something very important for us to understand. We said that they own over 800 thousand acres of land in Texas, but that's just the surface. It doesn't mean that they own all the oil beneath the surface because at some point they started selling the mineral rights. Other companies own the mineral rights on much of the surfaces owned by TPL. As such, in recent years, TPL has been acquiring mineral rights and sometimes the mineral rights can be on the land that is not really owned by TPL but other companies, other people. It is therefore wrong to assume that the TPL inherited a bankrupt company or the land owned by a bankrupt company and today they can just lease it to anyone. It's not like that. Only around 533 acres of mineral rights the company actually owns. There is a metric that we call the NOA, not National Rifle Association, but the net royalty acres. How much the company is actually generating from everything it owns because just because you own mineral rice doesn't mean that you're generating income from it. It's only once it is developed, once you have leased it, that you are generating income. Right now for TPL, it's around 23,000. And if you look at Viper, it's much bigger than that. So if you want to focus on mineral rights itself, Viper Energy is a much better option compared to TPL. The main business of TPL is not actually the oil that they own, but the surface and the water. In order for you to do fracking, there's a lot of water involved. There's much water that is needed in order to recover the oil itself. And there's extra water that can be sold. The water is owned by TPL because it is just below the surface. They sold the mineral rights, but not the water rights. So TPL, they make money from water, which is expanding at a rapid rate. And they also make money from the surface land that they own. On the surface land, the oil company themselves are going to use it to build their infrastructure. For example, they have to build roads, they have to build bridges, they have to build the rigs. It's on the surface and they have to pay TPL. TPL doesn't make money only from extracting the oil, but from the whole surface infrastructure. Now we have renewable energies developing in Texas, which is one of the sunniest state, one of the windiest state. TPL can also lease its land to renewable energy companies, even to data centers. Many people don't work data centers in their backyard, so these are built 
in the middle of Texas where nobody lives. They make also some money from grazing and over the most of their history, that's how TPL has been making money, grazing. The company that is the most comparable to TPL today would be Landbridge. But compared to TPL, they did not inherit any land from a bankrupt company 136 years ago. They had to acquire the land. And if you look at Landbridge, they don't own that much mineral rights. So they want to focus on the surface income itself, on the water income. Of course, if all production increases in the Permian Basin, TPL and Landbridge are going to make a lot of money, but it's not 100% correlated with oil. It's more about the things happening on the surface, not underground. So in a way, it is safer investing in these companies as you don't have to rely on oil prices that much. But also in a way, if you want to bet on higher oil prices, if you want to bet on the Permian Basin itself, it is much better investing in a company like Viper Energy, which is 100% into mineral rights. You can see that they make more money. I wanted to compare per net royalty acre, how much money they make from the royalty itself. Viper Energy make around $22 compared to $20 for Landbridge and only around $14 for TPL. Why TPL make less money? Because they made much of these deals before the Permian Basin became the richest oil region in the world. So they did not really know that uh, they had so much assets that they could sell at a higher price, that they could lease at a higher price. One thing I can say about Landbridge is that you need to be careful. It, it just had its IPO. You look at the number of shares outstanding of Landbridge on FinChart, it's 17 million, on Yahoo Finance, it's 60 million. Which one is right? Both are right, both are wrong. You have to understand the structure of the company. The management of the company, they own Clause B shares. And compared to Clause A shares, they only have voting rights. They don't have any economic interest in the company. Usually, when some shares do not have any economic interest, we don't count them as the shares outstanding. But here, they are able to convert it to Clause A shares. So there is the possibility that all these shares are eventually converted to class A shares. I don't know if they will convert it. Right now, they cannot convert it. They need to wait 180 days after the IPO. That will be in December. There will be a massive dilution. That's why I want to wait a little to see how much dilution is there really. Because it doesn't make sense to invest in a company today and you don't even know what is the number of shares outstanding. Is it 60 or is it 17? Now coming to Viper Energy. Around 60% of the company is owned by Diamondback Energy, which is an energy producer in the Permian Basin. And around half of the royalty revenues of Viper Energy comes from Diamondback. As an investment, I believe that Viper Energy will be the most volatile. And you cannot really grow that fast compared to TPL with water and also land bridge with water because this really, there is the opportunity for crop. This is not the case with Viper Energy. But if you really want to have exposure to oil in the Permian Basin, this will be the best option in my opinion. Of course, I'm not investing right now in any of these companies because I believe that all of them are overvalued, especially TPL, it is massively overvalued trading at 50 times earnings. Landbridge, I'm not sure how many times earnings it's trading because I don't know how many shares are sending there up yet. And as for Viper Energy, if we have a bear market in oil, probably the stock price will go down and I would be interested to invest in such a company. And even if the stock price of TPL, Landbridge falls down, I'm going to invest in such a company because I want to invest in companies that are undervalued like this one. I recommend you watch this video next. Have a nice day and goodbye.